Hey guys, in this tutorial, I want to show you how I created this cool church logo for a friend. Just did it recently, and I want to show you sort of how I created it and a bit of the process. So, first up, I want to show you the original logo design. So, that's just the sort of presentation. But I want to show you the original. So, this was the original logo that they current have. It's called Seven Streams International Church. So, I feel like I think this symbol is a clip art or something off like Google or something. I'm not sure. Um, but you can tell it's very, it's not very really custom and it has like this, um, you know, old school uh, goldish gradient um, going on, which doesn't necessarily look the best. Um, and obviously it doesn't scale well and there's, you know, the typography, it um, like the S's are weird caps, I don't know why. And there's like there's some spacing issues and legibility and stuff like that. But um, that was the original and then I recreated it and created this. So you can see here, I added like a little cross in there. Um, you know, I played around with different type faces. So use a sans serif font for here, and then um, did a more modern version of a sans serif font for that bit. I also did another um, version as well. But you can see the difference. There's a big difference there, and I can scale this down. It's going to work really well at small sizes, especially just the icon by itself. But I'm just going to show you through the IDs. So you can see here's the final result playing around with their color pal palette that was already on their website. So if I do go to their um, website, um, you can see right now, like I gave them the logo, obviously they're um, using whatever they feel like is necessary. Um, or they probably should be using the white one, but um, you can see their website here. I just pulled colors from here. So they have this like bluey purple tone. Um, and if I go to another page, you can probably see it. So it's blue tone. And but yeah, I didn't design their website. It's probably they did it by themselves, maybe, I don't know. But um, yeah, I just wanted to uplift their logo. So here's some of the designs. Here's like the black and white. And then I did a plain version without like the cross, um, just to have a minimal um, modern version. And you can see that, have like a vertical version there as well. And then playing around with um, responsive design. So how can the logo work in once it goes smaller and smaller? So it will start off like this, then this and then just the icon then maybe just um icon within a circle without the cross you can see that's got like the crown with like the little wave um, and then i did this version as well so still keeping the same um concept the same crown and the the stream or the wave and um just taking out the cross and then also changing the font here um to a more modern font so it's a sans serif Here's just like a tagline. I also redid their um, icons. So if I show you their icons, you can see they're just using these ones. Um, so you can see they're all inconsistent and different icons. And I don't blame them. If, if they don't have a designer, then obviously there'll be some inconsistencies. But I redesigned the icons like this. Went for a flat design. Um, obviously used some previous icons from a pack I've used and then I customized them and, and edited them, which is really cool. And did a couple of just mock-ups here, as you can see. And the Instagram account, chucked it on there. See what it looks like. And that's pretty much it. And I'm just going to show you, um, you know, how I sort of came up with it. You can see some of the final files here, just saving it all out. But originally, I just started off with, like, different fonts. You can see here some of the fonts are not showing up anymore. Um, what was I using? I was using, like, Gotham, Futura, and all these other different fonts here. But you can see I had Lato here, I had Baskerville as well, just playing around. And then I continued to play around. Um, I started to use like a uh, uniform and Herman, a couple new fonts I bought. I'm um, in a pack. And originally I had this icon straight away. I wanted to, um, originally they didn't have like a, a wave. I wanted to create like a, a wave representing like the streams or a, a river flowing. And then also I wanted to improve on the crown, just minimize it. But you can see it's, they're called seven streams. So originally I had they had five. So I just um, sort of traced over their um, crown. I, I took this image and I traced over it and pretty much created this. And then I was creating different iterations. Um, even had like one with a gradient going on. And then um, you can also see I did some sketches here. So I was playing around with different options. And then um, you can see the icon evolve. So I started off with a wave, um, wanted to keep the crown, then I thought like maybe this looks kind of cool, but maybe what if I change the crown to make it like seven, um, seven to on, on, the, on the top part. So each little um, section, there's like seven 
um, indentations um, which I do edit over here so you can see I I originally added with this and then I added the seventh um, on the crown as you can see there and I was playing around and then I stuck with this I, I like this type face here uh, which is really cool and you can see some other type faces here I was playing with um, just mocking up Zona Pro and BW Nista um, but yeah I ended up settling on these fonts here uniform and then this one here so you can see the progression I thought like what if I put two streams but I think it was getting too complicated um, but then yeah eventually I, I settled with this design and then I started like playing with it um, and then yeah coming up with this and they love the design they really like this one as well and um, and both of them really I thought it was really cool um, I'll quickly show you like how I created this sort of symbol here so what I did is I created a path so you, you can see I made, I got this smooth path so what I did I, I used the P for the pencil left click once and then what I did I made left click and drag and make one anchor point there and then I'll make another anchor point um, on the other side and just pull it a little bit like this you can see it's a little bit too deep so um, I might change the handles a bit so you can edit it like that so it's a bit more even maybe bring this down cool so that's looking looking nice and then what you do to, to um, get this nice thickness is you press shift W and that's gonna show you the width tool and with the width tool I can select the middle anchor point and literally just left click and drag and it's going to scale from the middle section and it's going to um, taper off the end so if I want to more taper I just grab the end and taper that off like that So I'm zooming in and you can see my width tool is still selected and then all I do is go to the end anchor point and left click and drag like this so now you can see I get this cool stroke and if I want to edit it I just select it press shift W again and I can go edit the thickness anytime I want I also can you know play around move the edges if I want if I want to make it like more smoother or something or maybe this is not um, curvy enough I can maybe move it I can do all sorts of stuff and that's how I came up with the that stroke and then I made it really thick and then with the crown um, if I just drag it out here so I literally just created a box so I just create a box like this I'll make it black and then with this I can use the pen tool again left click and then I will pretty much you know I can do it this way which is really the quick way like this and I can select it and then just press shift M for the shape builder tool and then just cut off any excess so that's one quick way of doing it like a manual way and then I can select this and I can actually reflect it like that using the reflect tool and then I'm gonna unite these together so go Pathfinder unite and now I've got this crown and then all I had to do for the circle or the top bit for the little flourish is just make like a circle like that and then what I can actually do is I can actually find the center point of this um, crown so this should be the center and then I can rotate so 25 degrees duplicate that and I'll probably just like do that and then I'll reflect this so I'm just showing you guys very quickly it's not a full-blown tutorial but I'm just showing you how to create how I did it so I do that and then I bumped up this stroke like you know and then what I do I get an object expand so you can go expand appearance here and this will turn it into a shape I'm just gonna duplicate this and then what I can do is select the the curvy stroke go object path offset path and then I can click round and just press OK and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it I'm gonna hold shift select the crown hold shift M to go to shape little mode and just cut those off so now I've got this effect where the crown flows with the the stream there as you can see and you know I can obviously make it bigger or move it up and down but I'll, I'll probably want to keep it in the same place where I did that effect 
And then I can just change the color, do whatever I want with it really. Oh, just make sure it's all grouped together. And that's how I created that crown effect. And then just added some, you know, the simple type. And you can see on the type, um, you can see all the leading, um, 40 tracking, the size and the leading. You can see that, but obviously these are two separate. You can see the two separate. I just grouped them together. And then that's how I created the seven streams logo. So I hope you guys enjoyed the bit of the process. Um, and I might, if you want me to create a logo by itself, um, like another crown logo maybe, then yeah, I can I can do a full blown through on how to do this. I'll quickly show you how I, um, so once I got the crown as well, I'll just show you how I did the cross. So with the cross, I just did a, a rectangle, two rectangles like this. Then I like plus them together. And then I got this, um, this cool plugin that I use. So if I go to um, dynamic corners, you can see I can do these effects. So if I click on apply to selection, I can do something like that. That's that's actually pretty cool. I can do something simple. I'll bump the radius down. So you can see I did something like this, where it like beveled off the edges, which I kind of like. And then I just drag it in here. I'll make it smaller. I'll center it so it's all centered. Then what I'll do is just um, hold shift, select everything, or select everything together. Press Shift M and then hold minus or Alt and minus that off, and that's how I minus the cross off. So now if this is just one shape, um, and make sure it's like all united. So I'll go Pathfinder and unite it. So all the shapes just like one shape. And then now we have that symbol, that logo, which is really cool. And yeah, that's how you create a sort of a crown. It could be for a church. It could be for a community, a group, um, a, a clothing label. There's so much stuff you can do with crowns, but I feel like, um, yeah, just playing around, just simplifying and just making everything a bit more legible, a bit more cleaner, more modern, um, can really, you know, change things around and make it look a big difference as you can see there. So thanks guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial. And if you want to see more tutorials like this, I'd be happy to create some more for you. Just leave a comment, hit subscribe and hit the like button because it helps me out. And I look forward to creating more tutorials. So catch you. Hope you have an amazing weekend and I'll see you next time.